Welcome to Sanibel and Captiva's original podcast, The Insider's Guide to the Islands. I'll be chatting with island experts from fishing guides to shellers to local personalities. I aim to get the insider information to make your island experience incredible. Okay, today is a special treat. We've got my good friend Dave Godfrey here, one of the uh, most infamous uh, fishing guides on the island here on Sanibel. Uh, he's been on the island for a long time, long time resident. Um, now works up at Jensen's, amongst other places. But uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your history on Sanibel and, and how, you've, how you started fishing and all the rest of it. Well, thanks for having me here, Nick. Yeah, good to, see, good to see you, man. Good to see you. I guess we're winging this one. Yeah, we're Put winging on this one. Yeah, right this will be a good one. But, you know, uh, when we were kids, we would uh, vacation on the east end of the island. So you're from where from originally? From Louisiana. Louisiana, okay. So my mom found a little excerpt in National Geographic years back said this is where we we need to go and spent my time fishing at the east end by the fishing pier going up there and left for a little while to join the uh, military so uh, uh joined tell the us army. a little bit that you were in the uh, army rangers was it i was i was a paratrooper Parachute. in the army okay. and uh stationed well basic and all that at fort benning georgia spent a little stint with the 101st the first of 327th and from there went overseas to fort kobe panama and served with the uh, Bravo Company, uh, Fort Kobe, Panama, in first of 508th. Okay. Left there in 91, saved up some money to, to take some time off, got bored, came here like three days after I, I got out of the Army and walked into the bait box and had a help wanted sign, threw it on the counter, and from then on just continued to fish. Well, that's yeah, funny. Yeah, 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 we're not skipping over that bit, but I think he's understating a little bit. You actually were in part of the the Panama Canal uh, conflict back right, then. Right, right. We we did the set up the invasion, followed through, and cleaned up the invasion. Well, thanks Panama. for your service, man. That's Very awesome. awesome. That's I'd do awesome. it all over again if I could. Yeah, and every year you'll, you'll see Dave at the head of the Veterans Club. They do a, a, a Memorial Day parade, and uh, Dave normally is the flag bearer. Uh, going down the Periwinkle Way when when they have the uh... right. So you came. So you decided you got out of the army. You decided to come to Sanibel because you'd visited here as a kid, right? And then um, did you know anyone here, or is it just you know? My little brother was going to Edison at the time. He transferred from LSU to, and he had to spend a little time going to Edison. So I came and shacked up with him. Said, "Surprise, I'm here," <laughs> and I didn't realize I was going to stay here. But once you know, fishing. Right. It's just, it was my passion. Right. And when I got here, I went to the bait box, walked in, got hooked up with Ralph Woodring. Yeah. Went down and started commercial fishing with him and working at the bait box and fell in love with Sanibel, the Pine Island Sound, the water, and, and everything about it. So, so Ralph Woodring is somebody, I don't know him, I, I don't know him at all, but um, I know of him. And, uh, He's he's been on the island for a long, long time. I'd love born, to speak to born him. On the born island. on the island. His mom Esperanza, who I worked with a little bit, was born on Cayo Costa. Oh, really? And Ralph was born here and has Woodring Point named after the family. Sam Woodring was his father. And Woodring Point is at the end of Tarp. Uh, it's the, the end beginning of, of Tarpon Bay. Tarpon As Bay. As you're okay. entering Tarpon Bay, the body of the water on or land on the left, just just right by Dixie Beach, at the end of Dixie Beach Road, to the left of there, or to the to the northwest is uh, Woodring Point, and I'll I'll put a little map up for that because there's they they've still got the dock there where they do the shrimp fishing there. Right, and, shrimp uh, boat. The original house is still standing. Ralph lives in that house. Still, still today. lives there. Yeah, still lives there today. Uh, and you used to run the shrimp boat, didn't you? you used to catch bait, go out at night yeah. and catch him bait. I commercial fished for Ralph for many years, from from '91 all the way, you know. All the way up to for a little over 20 years. Um, and there was that shrimp or was that everything? Shrimp, was bait, mullet, uh, trout, whatever. Whatever was in season, Ralph uh, made his living on the water and at the bait box. Really? He, yeah, he's he's more passionate about the Pine Island Sound than any other individual that I've ever met. And I think following his footsteps to see you through his eyes i it's just an amazing place you yeah. can be on there every day and see something totally unique and different 
Yeah, and I don't think if you drive back down to Woodring Point, um, it, it's like a bit of old Florida, really, isn't it? Yeah, it you know, absolutely it's older is. Older huts, well, not huts, but houses and older right. uh, stilt homes and uh, wooden. It, it is an amazing type place to be. Yeah. There's, there's very few places left uh, such as that. Yeah. I work at another amazing place right now. I work at Jensen's, which was built, started in the 30s and some of the cottages from the 40s on. And... That's located on Captiva. Yeah, those guys too. I'd love to have a chat with those guys. I know a lot about them. I don't know them. Per- I've said hi to them. And I know uh, one of the brother's uh, wives does weddings occasionally. Right. Uh, so I know, know her. Uh, but uh, yeah, fascinating story those guys have. They've got a, a Florida. Or it's, they've been there. For how long have they been there? They started. They got there in 77. So they bought that in 77 and have, have been true to it even to this day. Day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you go in there, if you it's it's a little bastion of uh, old Florida, isn't it? I mean, like everything acre, else has been around. Oh, an acre with fourteen cottages, uh, tackle shop, museum, uh, bait licenses, docks. Uh, the only thing that we don't have is a bar and restaurant, but but you can come There's in there. Around there. Oh, it, it's an amazing place. It's open to the public during the day from from say seven a.m. till six p.m. And then at evening times, they close it down just to the guests. But and definitely stop by there because, I mean, there's, it's tight for parking sometimes. I think oh, yeah. everybody runs around trying to get parking. But they've got a really cool, um, it looks like a ship's wheelhouse at the front right. that's right on the dock. It's a great place to see Manatee if, you, uh, if you're over there. It's a great place to rent boats as well. And we've had, uh, even though I live on the water and I have my own boat, we've actually rented boats yep. from there rent for the, the simple tans. reason that we can, you can start off from Jen since marina and a half day you can see pretty much the best things around in the area you can go up to kaya costa you can go whereas from my house going by boat that's a full day out that's the key we get a lot of people that that do have boats or rent boats from from the east end that it takes 45 minutes to an hour just to get to where you are to get to where we are and we start at the beginning of of where North Captiva, which is Redfish Pass, begins to Captiva Pass to Cao Costa. We have Cabbage Key 45 minutes away. We have Barnacles, which is another restaurant on North Captiva, just a short distance away. Tarpon Lodge, they do have water taxis. I mean, from A to Z, if you can think of it, uh, that little marina would, will cater to locals and uh tourists just as one yeah. and the same and there are plenty of locals that go in there absolutely and that's uh yeah the the, the fishing around that area too is is like amazing too you've got the flats and you've got the i think the whole west coast of florida is amazing entity for fish uh we have a lot of inshore fishing that is fantastic you know snook redfish trout tarpon mackerel uh sharks uh, different seasons present different fish. There's there's many species, a lot that that I haven't named: black sea bass, permit, pompano. I could go on for for you know another 20 minutes and probably not name them all around. So here. let's go. Let's touch on the fishing a little bit. Uh, Dave is famous for 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 being a fisherman in the area and very well respected, I think, even amongst his peers. Just explain about the little. You know what what sort of fishing can you expect to get from back bay to offshore and so from novice to expert, we have outstanding onshore fishing. So if you don't have a boat, we have many areas that are public access to go fishing. You have two key areas that are fantastic: are the Sanibel Fishing Pier, which is located at the east end at the lighthouse. You catch many different species there, uh, seasonal fish year-round fish as well and then you have ding darling wildlife refuge which is fantastic open from daylight to dark and then the third amazing place is uh blind pass blind pass on the moving tides evening and that's 24 hours such as the fishing pier ding darling is the only one that's open in the day but but you have some fantastic fishing on those three entities also if you don't want to get in your vehicle and drive you can fish from, if you're staying anywhere on the beach, any public beach access, there's outstanding fishing in the summertime. Uh, summertime from the beach, without a boat, you can catch sharks, you can catch tarpon, you can catch trout, you know, snook, uh, you name it. Yeah, just, that, that's a little bit more um, random, isn't it? By you, 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 I mean, you, when you're going out on a boat, you can actually target what you're looking for, but right. on the beach, you're sort of... Well, targeting on the beach is, is pretty successful, too, because oh, right. certain, certain areas hold certain fish, uh, certain stops 
will hold your tarpon. So there are favorite guys that that beach fish, and they keep that a a, a real real tight secret. So, so if you see pretty. guys loading up with shark gear and you see them more than once, you know there's going to be some pretty good shark fish in there. Right, right. Because right. everyone can access it. Now, by boat, we have some offshore fishing that is fantastic and inshore fishing. So tell us a little bit about the... the, the uh, I do a little bit of spear fishing myself. How, talk about the differences between the east coast of Florida and the west coast. So on the east coast of Florida, you could be out a mile and you could be in, in hundreds of feet deep of water. Whereas the West Coast, our ledge is out 100 plus miles. So, for example, on this coast, if you're 36 miles offshore, you're more than likely 80 to 100 foot of depth, if that, you know, 85 foot realistically. 12 miles, you may be, you know, uh, you know it's just very shallow, 25, 26 right. foot deep. As far as spear fishing here, uh, spear fishing, we do a lot of spear fishing on the ledges. Yeah. We do not have any type of reef structure here. Right. All our reefs out there are artificial reefs. Artificial wrecks. reefs. There's a lot of. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And there, uh, a lot of this information, you know, as far as laws with fishing seasons and everything, anyone can go to myfwc.com. Yeah. to find out the regulations for any fish of any species. And if you're going to fish here, you have to do that. Absolutely. Because there's so many different varieties and uh, species of fish, that, and their their seasons are changing constantly, right. and the limits and the lengths and the weights. So definitely check out that. I, out. And th I think the guys in the all the bait shops, right. they, they'll tell you what you can and can't catch. And Any of the bait shops here, it's, it's best to check in. Yeah. You know, and, and just go say hi, meet, meet the guys that are in the area and, and be a part of the community. A lot of guys, any tourist can come here. And when they come here, they have that, that tourist mindset. But when they leave here, they have that family mindset. This, that's, that's what's unique to Sanibel and Captiva. For sure. You yeah. know, most people dream of living here. And how many guests have you had or people that you take pictures of spent here vacationing and we see them year after year after year. And then next year. thing, yeah. they, they have a timeshare or their full-time residence because right. they fall in love with this yeah, place. Yeah, for sure. We were just lucky enough that we moved there at a younger age, Dave. Right. Isn't that right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So you still got family up in Louisiana or are they all here? I do. I have, I, have, I have family here in Florida. I have family in Louisiana as well. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather them come visit me than to go up to Louisiana. Yeah, Louisiana's <laughs> great fishing and all, but but you can't beat this spot right here. Right, right. So going on to uh, one of the most popular things in this area is the tarpon fishing. Yeah. That we know that uh, we just had the lady from Ding Darling here, and they do that. Well, you know all about the tournament, and they've just had it. We just and I understand that, yeah. you you fished in it, didn't we you? We did. Yes. Tell us all about that. How did that go? What sort of fish did you see? So it, it's for charity. And, and she explained all that to you mm -hmm. through the ding darling. But uh, we, I fished with for a team wounded warrior, or not wounded warrior, team uh, operation open arms. So I had a veteran uh, on my boat that was uh, wounded in combat and uh, team Jensen's, which teamed up to, to get to fish out there. We caught, you know, we caught our tarpon. We caught bull sharks. We caught uh, a little hammerhead. We caught big stingrays. Really? So there's, I what, mean. What counted for the competition? Just the tarpon or? Just the tarpon. And it's a catch and release. It's a fantastic tournament. You know, it, it is, it, it, it promotes the health and welfare of the fish. None of the fish are boated. You are, you have uh, wristbands on your, on your hand or both arms. And when you bring that fish to the boat, you have a leader touch where you're touching the leader within a certain distance and taking a picture of that fish with your wristbands in there mm -hmm. to signify a release. And that's, that's called a catch. And, and then you're releasing that fish unharmed and hopefully, you know, you- if To live another day. Right. And, um, and what sort, how did they measure the size of the fish? They don't, it, they is, don't. it is derived on, on account. So the most releases, not the most hookups. Oh, okay. Because there was, there was quite a few teams that, that got hookups that could not land the fish. Right. That, pic, that picture that you have counts as your catch is that not a little bit scary you have both your hands by a bull shark's so. uh this is tarpon oh but, okay <laughs> you know and, and you know it, it 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 is what it is but you know i tell you most of these that this weekend was uh, the weekend that we had the tournament it was a fantastic weekend as far as the clarity of the water okay uh, and does that help for tarpon 
you know, it, it, it helps you uh, in a sense. You have to lighten your leader. You have to do a little bit. It makes it a little bit more trickier. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, you know, it, for the people on the boat, it makes it a lot more exciting Okay. to see the fish coming towards oh, you. Oh, I and see. Casting. Once you get them on the, on the line. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you have, uh, so what's your favorite type of fishing to do? And is, do you have a favorite or? You know, I, I do. I love my tarpon fishing. Yeah. I love permit fishing. And that's uh, probably, sorry to interrupt, but that's probably what we're most famous for, isn't it? Right. So the first big game fish ever caught on rod and reel uh, was caught right here just outside of Tarpon Bay. And from there on, all the reel manufacturers knew that they had to do something. So the big names came here. They spent a lot of time in this area at USEPA, Cabbage Key, trying to design reels to land the big game so the invention of the offshore fishing reels and, and rods was right here really yeah really so randy white and carlene brennan have a book out and it it entails all the tarpon stories and, it, and, it, and the whole history of uh of the, the Randy the, White, who's the acclaimed uh, author and also right. an ex uh, Sanibel fishing guide. Randy guided out of the uh, Tarpon, I'm not, yeah, Tarpon Bay Marina. Okay. Years ago. Right. I caught my first Tarpon with him when I was like 12 years old. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And from then on got hooked. So his book is that, that's not a factual book? Or that is, is a factual book. Oh, it is? This Wh is. Which so one he's is that? written. Carlene Brennan, I, I forget Tales of Our Tarpon or whatnot. But, okay, we'll but, put a link to that. Um, yeah, and it, I'd like to read that myself. It is. It has. It. Yeah, and they, it's been out for quite some time now. Uh, and Carlene Brennan, who was still is around, but just one of the most amazing tarpon fishing, she fished a lot of tournaments back in the day and and won a lot of tournaments back in the really? day. Really? Oh yeah. How did you fare in this last one? Uh, we got 15th place out of 55 boats. 15th so out of 55. We had, there was 21 boats that caught fish, and the rest either hooked and didn't land or didn't, didn't catch fish. So gotcha. It, gotcha. Was, it was a lot of fish, but it was a slow bite, but it was still, I mean, we got on the board. and Right, right. You know, slow bite would mean in what? What does that mean? You, you just, know, uh, we, we, were, we threw it quite a few fish. Okay. And they were more interested in that mating dance. Yeah. Oh, you know, okay. Courting. Is that and, what it is with tarpon? They're, they're actually mating. Is that why they're... They are. They're on a spawn. Okay. So they're moving from the waist, their south region to the north region. Tarpon is, I mean, they live 30, 40, 50. They, they, they're very old fish. We don't know a whole lot about them scientifically uh, as far as their mating rituals. But, you know, they're starting to do more tagging. Right. And, and tracking of these fish. Amazing. So. Absolutely beautiful fish. I mean, like if you see them, we were diving in Bonaire a couple of years ago, and oh. uh, you go under these oil rigs that were 100 feet deep, and they're just very graceful. So unbelievable. Most, yeah, the most beautiful, beautiful fish. Just yeah. like a carved etch yeah. of stainless steel. Yeah, they're absolutely big stunning. yellow eye. And that's definitely on my bucket list of things to do. I'd love to go top and fish. You know, we got to get you out yeah. this summer. I mean, yeah. heck, you, you take a day and... What's the... Wh wh when is the actual season? Well, you know, it's it. there's, n there's a, a legal season on fish where you can catch and keep. But as far as seasons with fish, it's all on based on water temperature, salt content, and if the bait has arrived or not. Okay. These fish don't know the months. They just know what their conditions are right. to, to feed, spawn, do the whole nine yards. So I think what's was, the window for tarpon? Like for, uh, uh, you know, you know uh, April, mm -hmm. they start coming in. And, you know, it's, once it starts getting cold, May, June, July, August... And once it starts getting cold, then the tarpon start migrating down south. Is that two or three years ago, we were catching tarpon up until uh, December 20th. Oh, wow. Which was, which was um, the great thing about that was everyone had forgotten about tarpon. So everybody was inside the bay chasing redfish. Mm -hmm. And they had, you know, massive, massive amounts, hundreds and hundreds of tarpon in the Gulf. And they only had X amount of us on these fish. Wow. Which is, you know, you know. In, in the in the height of season, you were going to run into a lot of boats. Right. And then is it, 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 where's your best fishing for tarpon? Is it offshore or inshore? Either or. Either you can or, choose yeah. it. You know, they have the, the guys that, that grew up inshore that, that got taught techniques that, that really thrive on that. And they have the guys that are offshore. That So it just depends on, you know, uh, your choice. Yeah. 
a well-rounded guy can go inshore or offshore, but but it doesn't. There's no pigeonhole in the tarpon fishermen. They can catch them at any place. So are you still guiding now, Dave? Not not really. I fish a lot of the tournaments. Okay. And I do a lot. I work with some of the veterans organizations and taking the vets fishing. That's awesome. I, I dock master at Jensen's and work the office a little bit. Uh, and while you days. while we're talking about that, the the uh, definitely check out. Um, I'm going to put a link though. But Dave does a, a fishing spot there every week. Is it every week? Every week. Um, it's a goofy report. Just, it's just a, it's a, great. It's just like a couple of little tidbits every week about stuff you can do for, whether it's from a bait bucket or to cast netting or whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. And uh, it gives you a bit of insight. It's definitely worth a checking out. Oh, is that on YouTube or is that on the Jensen's? It's, it's on the Jensen's Facebook. Jensen's Twin Palms uh, Cottages and Marina Facebook. Quit wishing, go fishing. Quit wishing, go fishing. That's it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. So, uh, all right. So, how long, how long have you been over at Jensen's now? I started guiding at Jensen's, uh, you know, in the mid 90s. Oh, wow. And then worked there for quite some years, left a little bit to, to see if I wanted to make it on land and work. And land wasn't for me. I came back to the water. I left, I left Jensen's for what, three years or th- four, I don't know. It was. It seemed like an eternity, and now I'm back on the water. And then I, I dock master at Cabbage Key Thursdays, Fridays. Oh, you do? Which okay. is yeah, and that's uh, that's fun. I just started doing that for a little bit extra to see. Jeff was looking for a dock master out there this season, a couple of months ago. He said, you know, you interested? I said, you know what? I might as well pull the trigger now. I'm not getting any, yeah, any younger, yeah. and let's see what it's about. And I've been having fun working up there. Yeah, that, the Cabbage Key is a must-go to if you're boating. Um, that was that was built as a private residence, and it's been it was built in the late 20s, early 30s. It is a restaurant. Jimmy Buffett wrote the Cheeseburger in Paradise song about that, but it's fantastic little restaurant. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Lunches are key yeah uh, they also have the tarpon lodge but that's that's a unique place if you're a guest you can jump on a boat uh take your own rental boat up there take your own boat or even you know go from jensen's look yeah yeah they'll, they do uh, lunch trips there too right 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 and it's it's a really cool place it's uh they don't do any frying there because it's right uh, because of the fire right. potato oh, salad and coleslaw yeah right. that's it but it's a really cool place uh expect to spend some time there there in oh, season yeah. it's because not it just in and out yeah but it's just not in and out for lunch there's a lot of places that if there is a wait there's there's Nice little nature trail and, and just beautiful scenery on the, around the And island. if you really want to spoil yourself, they've got some fantastic cottages right on the oh, water yeah. there, haven't they? Which yeah, they do actually, overnight. The stilts actually go into the water, yeah. which is something we've talked about doing many times. Oh, that's that's a magical place in the evening time. Yeah. Do you fish when you're out there or no? Not, not from the dock. I'll, uh, you know, what's nice about there is I can scout fish, taking the boat up there to go to work, and then on the way home I can, I can fish on the way home cool 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 so if you were if you were coming to the area for the first time i mean two people a lot of people do travel here just for fishing mm-hmm. uh what would you say uh where where would they start where's the best place to start you know i would i would if you're bringing your own tackle you know the mainstay is a, is a 15 pound seven foot rod setup and and walking the beaches and, and lure fishing is fantastic here. You can get live bait, but live bait you babysit, and, and, and frozen bait you kind of have to babysit as well. But lure fish is fantastic. Lure fishing is fantastic here. What's a good run of the mill lure that if you if you had a go to, what would it be? A spoon. A, a spoon, spoon is the the most versatile lure in the world. You can go to any country, any state, you know, any know freshwater, saltwater, and throw out a spoon. And, and your odds are better than the choosing any other lure out there. Really? Everything will hit a spoon. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh, I didn't know that. And then bait, your, obviously, if you're just coming here, you're better off going to the bait shops and getting right. it. You can catch your own bait, but, you know, bait shops, there's, there's many bait boxes. We sell bait at Jensen's. The bait box has bait. You know, it's just you, you have to have a bucket, purchase a bucket, and get some live bait or frozen bait. Shrimp is the bait of choice. A lot of these are pinfish, you can get them, but shiners, pilchards, and all that, a lot of these shops don't sell them because they're so hard to keep alive. Right, gotcha. We did have a customer that came in uh, the other day, and I'm not going to mention his name because he'd be dreadfully embarrassed, but he did admit to buying cooked shrimp from the Lazy Flamingo for bait. That doesn't work, does it, Dave? 
No, if you want to catch catfish, yeah. <laughs> he said he couldn't wonder. He kept wondering why his his uh, shrimp kept falling off the hook, but yeah, <laughs> he figured it out. Fresh shrimp is is good. Everything picks on a shrimp. Right, 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 right. And then if you, I, I when I first moved here, um, we were working at Sanibel Print and Graphics, and the uh, the um, I was there for about six months to a year, and the printer in that shop, he 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 was also a fishing guy. Tom? Tom, exactly. Yes. Do you remember Tom? Yes. Yeah. So ha, that's funny that you know him. So he 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 said uh, I came in all excited one day. We'd only lived in the country for about six months. I said, Tom, you're going to be dead proud of me. I caught a load of fish. He said, What'd you get? And I said, uh, I got like seven catfish. He goes, You know what? He goes, There's one way to tell if you're in the wrong place when you're fishing. And I was like, How's that? He said, If you're catching catfish. I was devastated. I thought I'd done really well. I've never but... caught a catfish. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and after you catch a few of them, you can see why, can't you? you Our know? catfish, we have two species of catfish here, gaff top seal and the channel cat. But if you get stuck with a catfish, you know it. it you'll speak a different language. You'll make up a language. So the catfish here are not too preferred. They're fun to catch, but... Move, and they're easy. Move, yeah, move to... A, and, and like I said, you can always catch something, right, generally. Right, right, right. Okay, Dave, so you've been out fishing for a day. you got some keepers. What do you suggest you do with the fish after you caught them? So a lot of the guides will catch the fish after they catch and they will clean the fish, you know, within season requirements. If, if you're not going to bring your fish back to your resort to cook it, uh, I'd, I'd recommend releasing them. But there are a few restaurants uh, that will cook your fish. I know the Lazy Flamingo, personally, uh, I you, think that's where we first met many years ago, right, Dave. Right, at Lazy too. Yeah. Uh, but the Lazy Flamingo, they they will cook your catch and throw in sides in the whole nine yards. Uh, some of these other restaurants check with. Uh, I know the Bimini Bait Shack's about to open up. Right yeah, across right Causeway. across, just on the the other side of the and causeway. Pete's, Pete's telling everybody that they will cook cook and you know, your fish if you bring it in. And these fish have to be cleaned. Within reason that you can't just bring the fish in there. So yeah, they're, they're, they're busy restaurants. They're not going right. to stand there. And, and and fish professional cleaning, right? Know, debone them and all that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'd recommend that. But you know, there's plenty of fish at these restaurants if if you don't want to deal with the cleaning of the fish. Yeah, and the Lazy Flamingo, phenomenal fish oh, restaurant yeah. anyway. So oh, uh, in fact, if you want anyone to cook fish, uh, it's them for you. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. So. All right, great. Um, anything else? How, how can anybody get in touch with you, Dave? You know, I, I do a little bit of Instagram here. You know, uh, uh, Shoal Bandit 1909. It, I, I, I check it every once in a while. Um, I, I need to be more adamant on posting pictures and stuff, but this season... This, but my best way to get with you is with the uh, Jensen's yeah, Facebook page. Just Yeah, just Jensen's Facebook page or come up and see us at, 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 uh, at Jensen's Marine up on Cabot. Cabbage, I mean, at, on Captiva, Captiva. Yeah. or just if you're if you're at Cabbage Key on Thursdays and Fridays, give me a shout, say hi. Uh, I'd love to see y'all. And then one thing we didn't mention is how many uh, guides have you got that work out of Jensen's? We've got five guides out of Jensen's, and, and they do their own booking. You know, you can call up, you can go to uh, gocaptiva.com, and it'll it'll link you right to Jensen's Twin Palms Marina. They have a golf site as well. And it'll tell you a little bit about Jensen's. Uh, that the guides they do all their own bookings, but you go to the marina side and you see all the guides that the guide out there, and and they'll show you a good time. Yeah, and Dave and I actually live very close to each other, and he's got a quite innovative way of uh, skipping the traffic. How's that work, Dave? I, I run my boat to work. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's <laughs> so the he way puts to his go. boat down at the lighthouse restaurant, which is actually on the uh, Port Sanibel Fort, Marina. Port right Sanibel yeah. Marina, right there. Just keep and, the boat right uh, there. keeps his boat there and flies out to uh, Jensen's when the when the traffic's bad. Absolutely, season is is not bad for me. It's thirty five minutes to work and thirty five minutes home. Superb. All right, man. Well, great to have you on. Thank you very much. It's, it's been awesome. a pleasure to have you. Hey, you made this very easy. Oh, oh, there's one more thing, Dave. Do you know what this is? Oh, yeah. What is it? So, this, this is a conch. It's a queen conch. Yeah. Yeah. Any good at, uh, can you get a tune out of that, Dave? Every guest we've had on has yeah, tried. I can do hello. <laughs> you know. I'll do it with you. Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. No, I'm doing it with you. Come on. Oh. Let's see. you got to do it. Ready? <laughs> Cheers, Dave. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Until next time, thanks very much. Quit wishing, go fishing. <laughs> thanks for listening to the Insider's Guide to the Islands. Please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. Thank you.